Okay. Well, I can call this meeting in the order, and I shall do so. Of uh, the city council for the city of Buckhannon, Mary will be with us in a moment. But we always start at seven o'clock, and I like to maintain that tradition. Um, what I'd like to do first is, as we normally do before we begin our meeting, a uh, moment of silent prayer and meditation. Then we have the pledge of allegiance to the flag. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. We appreciate it. And uh, we like seeing some new young faces in the audience, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, Pam Kapari's begged off for tonight for uh, due to illness, so we will be missing her and we'll keep her in our prayers as well. Uh, one of the first things we always do is uh, do our traditional, um, it's been about maybe 30 years we've been doing this. We'd like to uh, introduce our Westland students, have them stand up, give us your name, where you're from, and what your major is. Um, I'm Lauren Duncan, I'm an exercise science major, and I'm from Sugar Hill, Georgia. I'm Robert Ruffini, I'm from Parkersburg, West Virginia, and I'm an accounting and computer information science major. Okay. My name is Steven Seibert. I'm an international studies major. I'm from Doylestown, PA. Uh, I'm Ian Miles. I'm from Hurricane, West Virginia, and I'm a county major. Welcome back to Buchanan. This is your second semester, and uh, if not, welcome to Buchanan. We love seeing the Westland students here. And really, that's just the way the professors can actually check to see if you're actually here for the class. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on from there, um, I have no recognized guests in particular, but I did have a Mrs. Strickland. If Am I right? Is it Strickland? Yes. Um, that asked us to speak. Do you want to speak anywhere in particular, or is now a good time for you? Well, it was about the uh, traffic lights. The traffic lights? All right. I saw the street lights. Um, we, if you prefer, we can wait till we have that discussion. Or Yes, sir, I will. Right. Thank you so like much. like to hear everyone else's thoughts. Yeah. Great. Um, anybody else have anything that they would like to say in the audience before we get started? Very good. Well, we may I continue with our agenda with our department and board reports. Mr. Doss, City Administrator. Yes, you do have in front of you the, uh, the December 31st uh, financial summary for general fund. I do want to report to you that as of December 31st, 2014, our total revenues collected were $2,008,972.12. Our total expenditures are $1,785,323.35 which is an excess uh, revenue over expenditures in the amount of $223,648.77. Again, remind council that you, I, I can give you and provide with you a comprehensive financial report, report a detailed financial report. Other than this, uh, if you'd like to see me after council, I'll be happy to supply that to you. I want to let you know that we have fin finished our second quarter of our fiscal year. That, of course, ended December 31st, so I will be pre presenting to you uh, a second quarter report, financial report, at our February 5th meeting. Um, under old business, a few items to discuss. With our home rule and our home rule application, uh, we continue to work on draft ordinances, uh, with the establishment of an enterprise zone uh, for economic development tax incentives, as well as um, an ordinance for certified and uh, experienced part-time officers to assist our Buchanan Police Department. As you recall, these are two of the pillars within our home rule application. Uh, working with Mr. McCauley, uh, we hope to have at least one of those draft ordinances to present to the West Virginia Home Rule Board. Their next meeting is March the 2nd. Of course, there's an entire process that we have to go when we propose ordinances. We have to run that down to the West Virginia Home Rule Board, which meets quarterly, uh, provide them with what we're thinking as far as a draft ordinance, and we have to essentially get their blessing before we can advance that to council and, and put it back in the community for consideration of legislation. Um, so again, we're working on that. That next meeting is March the 2nd, that quarterly meeting of the West Virginia Home Rule Board. Um, other than that, just want to remind council that we have a special work session that's scheduled um, for Monday, January the 26th at 6 o'clock. Um, items uh, to be discussed are the 2015-2016 general fund budget requisitions. Um, I've provided uh, the general fund departments, that's police, fire, uh, Stockert, and street with their budget worksheets for the 15-16 fiscal year. 
Uh, they're in the process of submitting those, those budget requisitions to me. Uh, I want to talk to you all about that. Those are due to me next Friday, and I, I want to talk to you all about that on the 26th meeting because there's a couple of items that some of the departments are asking for that I feel councils should take under consideration as we move towards adopting the 15-16 budget. Um, also, uh, at that meeting on the 26th, we'll be discussing the employees' benefits package. I know several council members expressed interest in me providing them with a benefits package of all of our employees, so I will be presenting that at the special session. Uh, we need to discuss fire fees. Uh, we've, we've touched on that a little bit at the last work session. I believe Mr. McCauley is going to present to you just a, a very raw, rough draft uh, ordinance of the fire fees uh, for you to look at and, and, and discuss on the 26th and also uh, discussion of the business and occupation tax structure <coughs> and the categories as well. So that is what I have on my plate to discuss with you all at our special session on the 26th. If anyone has any additional things they would like to discuss, if you could just see me after council, shoot me an email or give me a call, I'd be happy to put those on the agenda. But it looks like it's gonna be a, a full agenda with just those, those four items. Um, then a couple updates on some employment positions. Our building and code enforcement officer position. I'll let you know that the deadline for that application submission is January the 30th. Currently our office has received several applications for that position. Uh, as far as the city attorney's position, that there is a deadline for the statement of qualifications. That deadline for submission is also January the 30th. Our office has received several inquiries uh, related to that position, but no submissions at this time. Um, other than that, Mayor, uh, there'll be a couple of items under the resolutions that I'll probably be called on to talk to you about. So. All right, Mr. Doss, thank you. Mr. Pugh? Do you have applications, or is it just a resume for the uh, those positions? Well, what we would what like, uh, Ron, is to have them come to the office, pick up an application, fill the application out if they want to fix a resume to it as well. Okay. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mr. Doss? Thank you very much, Mr. Doss. We appreciate that. Chief Gregory, Police Department. A few things to report on to our council tonight. Uh, I was contacted uh, yesterday uh, by a member of uh, Mon Power. Uh, apparently, the utility pole uh, behind the public safety complex uh, that just caused them some concerns. And as a result, uh, they are going to replace that utility pole. Uh, as a result of that work, uh, the public safety complex will be without power. Uh, they feel it could be upwards of, uh, of a work day, uh, but, but as, as little as two hours. Uh, the projected date for this work is Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. Uh, as far as the police department, we are planning on uh, having Jessica come to City Hall and work out of City Hall. If officers uh, working that shift uh, need office space, we will also work out of City Hall that day. But uh, in lieu of that, we will plan on being in our cars working in the field. The uh, mutual aid agreement that uh, Mr. McCauley has uh, spoken with you about uh, as a result of the uh, partnership uh, that uh, uh, we have designed with our, our, our neighboring agencies, the Sheriff's Department here in Upshur County, uh, and uh, as well as the Lewis County Sheriff's Department and the Weston Police Department is progressing. Uh, we have uh, been having regular meetings uh, with the, each of these agencies, these investigators meetings, and this kind of uh, came as a result of uh, the initial meeting that was spearheaded by Mr. McCauley and so really got the ball rolling last fall uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Elenfeld, the uh, United States Attorney for the Northern District of West Virginia. Really brought a lot of these agencies together to the table, got us talking, and as a result, we've been having these monthly meetings. Uh, been very well received, very very uh, excellent networking opportunities. Uh, we've had uh, local, uh, county, state, and federal agencies attend each of these meetings. A lot of information is being shared, and again, as a result of this, uh, or, or if you will, a byproduct of this, is this mutual aid agreement uh, that uh, we are currently crafting. A draft of this, um, drafted by Mr. McCauley, is in the hands of all the agency heads. Uh, uh, my understanding is uh, the only feedback that I've had at this point is just some uh, logistical stuff, just a little tweak to the uh, rank structure uh, for the Weston Police Department. Theirs is just a little bit different than ours. But other than that, uh, it's, it's uh, been well received. There's, there's nothing else that's been recommended to be changed. 
So I'm just awaiting final feedback from these agencies to uh, get the ball rolling and get signed off by our legislative bodies, uh, hopefully here in the near future. Uh, also, just the other day, we had representatives uh, from Charleston uh, uh, come to the Buchanan Police Department uh, to uh, uh, perform a grant monitoring visit for our VIPS grant, our most recent grant. As you know, uh, we received uh, $15,000 in funding to get this VIPS program off the ground and get it started. And uh, that purchased all the equipment that our volunteers need in terms of radios, uh, some uniforms traffic vests, traffic batons, and the like. Um, we had uh, uh, reviewed all of the documents. We even had some of our volunteers come in and take part in the meeting, and they were very, very well received uh, by the representatives in Charleston. They were impressed that we had come that far uh, in as little time. Uh, given that this time last year, it was just a fleeting thought in the back of our mind that we got the ball rolling mid-year and really got it off the ground. Uh, toward the end of the year. So they were very pleased with where we're at and where we're moving forward at that point. Then the only thing I have is we are currently uh, with uh, wrapping up uh, the calendar year uh, uh, at the end of last month. Uh, we are currently uh, working on our year end report. Uh, we anticipate this to be uh, released and I'll report on this to council at uh, the next uh, the next time I come to council, so, uh, I guess it'll be the third meeting in February. So I do anticipate having that and uh, ready to present. And I guess uh, as a result, my understanding is um, historically these are not uh, short uh, reports. So I guess that's put me on the second page or of the of the agenda. I'm no longer first anymore. But uh, you might want to bring two batteries. Up. I plug in the wall. Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> That's all I have unless there's questions. Question. Yes, uh, um, Chief Gregory, how many of the trained v VIP volunteers do you have? We have five. You have five? Yep. Yep, I think that's an excellent number given the, the small of a town is what we are and, oh. and, you know, getting it off the ground. I sweat bullets all throughout the summer just worrying about whether this thing was going to take off or not. And, and I was pleased that it did. And, and Chief Barry, if some of the VIPs um, trained people, are they also cert certified? Yes, yes, they are. Okay. Yeah, and you know we have some good, uh, um, you know, some good background, some good depth to our volunteers. We uh, one comes from uh, a background in education. She currently works with uh, Head Start. Uh, another has a background with the emergency squad, and another is a former dispatcher here in Upshur County. So uh, you know a lot of depth. In terms of what they can bring to the table. Yeah. What's the status, Chief, of the uh, body cameras? Yes, sir. The uh, particular body cameras that we were looking at uh, are currently on pre order. Uh, they uh, were just introduced at the International Association of Chiefs of Police Conference uh, just this last fall. And as a result, they, the company is currently taking pre orders. We do have a quote. Uh, and for what that is going to cost is well within the uh, budget allotted to us by City Council and are in the process of getting the ball rolling to get the pre-orders. They do anticipate the product to be released in March and uh, in addition to that we are also getting quotes on uh, the storage and the server side of things as well. Okay, thank you Chief. Yes, sir. Any other questions for Chief Gregory? David? Um, I will inform uh, Council that um, there was a Thanks to uh, Municipal Judge Randy Levine, we've come up with a dangerous dog uh, complaint form. Um, we're moving ahead with Ordinance 300 to see about um, the enforcement that uh, we're talking about. So we've come up with a plan and with a form. Uh, we haven't, fortunately, haven't had the opportunity to use it, and we hope we don't. But if not, it will become the test case on how we determine uh, the dangerous dog situation according to our ordinance. So. We're, it hasn't been done in a while. We're going to see how that works out. It's a very interesting way of going about determining that. So thank you, Chief. I just want to let Council know that. Uh, you might hear about that in the future. Any other questions for Chief Gregory? Thank you, Chief. Tell you guys how much we appreciate the work over the holidays. I will, thank you. Um, Mr. Landis or Mr. Arnold? I don't know who it is. Mr. <coughs> Mr. Arnold. Uh, just fill you in on a few things we've been working on with it. Uh, just one water leak, which we was pleased last month, which was a Billingsley Drive. 
where the hill keeps slipping. Uh, that's the second time we was called out there, uh, and it was not due to the water leak. It was the hill that caused the water leak. So what we ended up doing this time is we actually put the two customers on more water until we can relocate the line on the opposite side, which the gentleman who owns the property agreed to pay for the line to be installed. Uh, right now we're waiting on some right-of-ways that he needs to supply us with. Uh, we actually inserted two one-inch lines inside the six-inch, about 300 foot each on each service. Had to cut the main six-inch line down over the hill a little piece to, I mean, if it kicks a little bit with the inch lines, it's not as bad as the six. Uh, thankfully, the last time the hill slipped, we did cut the valley back to just about a turn, where if we would have had it all the way open, we could have probably lost a tank on the leak part. But he is working with us on that. Uh, and that's the only boil water we have right now. Uh, we can continue to work on some of the tank sites, like North Buckingham. We had a screen issue on top that we had to repair. Uh, we have worked some on the flood control dam over here on Island Avenue. Uh, we still got some issues there where we have to still plate the outside to try to do some work on the inside where uh, to make a smaller gate in order to keep all the debris out of the inside from clogging up the actual control gate itself. Uh, we've been working on St. Dubain's fire service line. It's pretty well completed now. Uh, we've had a couple good days that we've been able to work on it. Tennerton Booster Station, we've had issues with it. I've got the materials in for one side of it. We have two actual pumps where they alternate. Uh, this one runs first and then after it kicks off when the tank's full, then the other one. And I showed Mr. Doss what we was up against, and he agreed wholeheartedly on how we needed to go about approaching the replacement of them. Uh, the only, that's about the only thing I have other than uh, we did have a lot of issues as far as during the cold weather, we had a lot of call outs. Uh, as far as freeze ups, uh, some was theirs, some was ours. The men responded well, getting called out three, four o'clock in the morning, taking care of problems. And then my end of the year thing isn't as big as Matt's, but basically all I done was just give you an idea of what we're looking at in the way of leaks. Uh, 2013, we had a total of 32 leaks and six bull waters. And of those 32, six of them was main line breaks. We categorize all the leaks as from uh, service line leaks or you know anything like that. But the main lines is actually two inch and above that would cause us more issues. And then we had a total of three, three million six hundred and eighty three gallons of water that was due to those leaks that we estimate through a leak calculator each time we had a leak. This year we had uh, 33 leaks and seven bull waters and but the total's down a little bit. I mean we're down to like a hundred 1,493,000 on the leaks. But some of them, if you look at the main line breaks compared to the service, that accounts for a lot of that. The bigger the line, the more the water. That's all I have. Any questions for Mr. Arnold? Thank you. Go ahead, I, don't, David. I don't have a question, but um, Tom, I've had a couple people call me in the last month or two that don't have a, uh, they wonder why we charge a minimum charge for the usage of water. And I think it's what, 4,000 gallons a month is a minimum? 2,000. And um, there, is, there is a minimum charge. And they think that, well, if they only use 1,000 gallons, that they should be charged accordingly. And um, I've commented to them that there's a high fixed cost for either the water or the sewer department so that we have to have a minimum charge whether or not they even are using water that month. Is that a reasonable explanation or do I need to go beyond that? To me, that's a reasonable explanation. I mean, we have a lot of costs incurred. And if you looked at the PSDs, uh, the majority of them is based on 3,000 gallon. And there's a lot of people in the country that uh, they're very conservative with water because they're used to being on wells. Maybe they only use 1,500 to 1,800 gallon of water. But they pay the minimum bill. Uh, yes, there is a lot of cost incurred because we read the meters each month. Uh, we have the vehicles, the employees, as well as 
all the paperwork and everything that AMB and City Hall does. But yeah, I think it's very reasonable. And you got the physical plan itself. Yep. And you have to produce the water to go through the the meter itself. Just to give you an idea, a few years ago we was paying somewhere around thirty to forty dollars a meter. Uh, Two thousand, I think it was fourteen. They passed this no lead law, where you're not supposed to have any lead in the meters. If we got a meter in the system. It's it's fine right now, but that meter has to be changed or supposed to be changed every ten years according to PSC rules. Uh, that meters went up to sixty eight dollars uh, per meter, and that's just for direct read meters. Uh, we've only got like a couple hundred that are radio read meters. So every month, and there's a lot of people that make the accusation, my meter's not been read. But I can assure you that every meter is read every month because there's a time stamp on that handheld when they was there, when they read it. So we know that they've been read. And it's just that uh, the way the meter reader can go about it after he's done it so long, he can lift that lid, look in there, get his reading, drop it back. It looks as if he's not been there, but he has. But that's just a, we had a complaint this week. I'll just put that out there now so that everybody knows they are being written. Thank you. I don't, don't think we've estimated any this year, have we, Amy? Didn't we have about 30 meters maybe? About 30 estimated. meters is all we've estimated during the cold weather. I got a quick question for you, Tom, or Kelly can answer. Um, do you, are you aware of any <coughs> municipalities that do not charge a minimum charge? <coughs> you? I've never heard one that doesn't. I think it's pretty much standard throughout the industry. To cover the basics. Um, thank you, Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Cruz, for all the work they've done over the cold weather. Um, Mr. Ludlow has begged off. Um, Tim Rock is out of town, and Mr. Doss was going to give Sam's report. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll make it brief. Uh, there were several items. The sanitary board met today on the 15th, uh, and again, discussed several items. I'm going to pick out three that I think are, are, are relevant to, to city council's knowledge. Uh, the first was there was a, uh, an INI inflow and infiltration report that was submitted. Uh, within that report, uh, the sanitary board updated uh, updated uh, in the report on the storm, very storm projects and storm upgrades and improvements that they've been working on to remove extraneous flow. Uh, so that report has been submitted. Uh, on the NPDES permit and appeal, uh, just want to advise council that DEP denied our permit modification. Uh, so we will actually be appealing their decision to the Environmental Quality Board. In addition to our appeal, we will be meeting with state legislators on the 28th of, of January um, to discuss them introducing legislation to the West Virginia State Legislature that we feel will assist us in, in our fight with DEP over our NPDES permit. So there will be more to come on, on that um, in future meetings to update you. And finally, uh, there's some work that's going to be done on the Tucker Street, uh, a new storm sewer project uh, that they'll be doing on Tucker Street. Uh, that project is set to begin next week, and it will continue for several weeks, possibly months. So this is just a PSA, if you will, to advise the folks on Tucker Street and the surrounding area that some of those <coughs> streets will be blocked off while they do some of that work specifically on Tucker Street. So we just want to get that out there to the public that they will be starting some storm work on Tucker Street starting mid next week. Um, other than that, uh, that's that, I think that works for now. That's it pretty much right. I'll uh, try uh, to answer this. <laughs> well, I hope you can. Uh, <clears throat> when I asked, I believe it was Tim Rock the other day at the last meeting or something that the, about the storm sewer work that was going to be done uh, uh, in, in between Barber Street and Tucker Street. Uh, specifically in, in an alleyway and stuff like that, that uh, he said that he knew of nothing that was going to be going on in, in that area. So now, does this project only going to be on Tucker Street, or is it going to encompass anything over towards Barber? Primarily on Tucker Street. It's going to stay on Tucker Street. Okay. <clears throat> but there's going to be trucks in and out of the area, so we want to advise folks that, <laughs> you know. And that is one of the shortcuts for academy to oh, yeah, uh, yeah, school yeah. time, so we want to make sure that everybody's aware. Yeah, is it the whole length of Tucker Street? No, no. Not, not the full length, no. Which end? Just up near Academy School. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> From uh, Kanawha to Academy. Okay. Yeah. That's whatever yeah. street that is. Thank you, sir. Yeah, 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 that's part, yeah, Amy's right, it's part of the DOH lane widening project. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so we're doing it in advance. tying that in. Oh, oh yeah. that's finally coming back. <coughs> yeah. yeah. All right, any other questions for Sam? I mean, Michael? <laughs> Tim, whatever. You, you talked Thanks much too quickly. Mordecai. Uh, we have Mr. Uh, yeah. Clement, zoning officer, sir. <coughs> sir, please. Uh, just a couple of things briefly. We've had some uh, severe issues with uh, a couple of properties in town. We finally got the uh, property across the street cleaned up and uh, the lot uh, leveled and so on. Uh, that was um, almost a year uh, trying to get that uh, cleaned up. We've got another one downtown that we continue to have some severe problems with that uh, is still unresolved. Um, potential owner and current owner, but uh, there's some severe fire hazards, electrical hazards in that building and it's been closed. Uh, power's been removed from the building. That's uh, actually happened probably early September last year. Uh, I have some other issues uh, in the building area, although it's usually pretty quiet this time of the year. Uh, the other area that I've uh, been doing some work on is security of our internet system. Uh, with all the um, height and alerts about uh, attacks and infiltration of systems and so on, we want to make sure that uh, all of our customer information and all of our systems are protected as best we possibly can. There is no 100% uh, guarantee that you don't have those kinds of issues now and again. But uh, did attend a seminar in Pittsburgh uh, on security of, of um, uh, information technology systems including, uh, they had presentations there from the FBI, uh, Secret Service, uh, and, and several other uh, organizations, Homeland Security and the like. Uh, very eye-opening in terms of uh, the kinds of resources that we need to have available and are available to us, particularly through the FBI. But that's all I have unless you have questions. Ms. Uh Status on the house uh, on Barber Street. I understand that uh, Mr. Westfall did apply for a permit and was turned down. Uh, what legally that house uh, is way past the deadline for doing anything to it, I believe. Uh, but it smells the when it rains the the odor from the charcoal and the fire and everything that was in the upper part of it. The neighbors are hounding me left and right uh, uh, about about the odor that's coming from it. Uh, I, and Mr. Westfall told me that he has to get contractors to redo, to fix the building since it's going to be a rental property. Uh, do you have any update on that or anything? I inspected it uh, three or four weeks ago. Uh, I, quite frankly, in the building, uh, don't detect any uh, beyond the reasonable smell of a building that's been on fire. Uh, there is paint that uh, will be applied to all of the uh, uh, portions of the home that's been uh, burned in an effort to contain that. Uh, that's pretty traditional. There's a couple of uh, beams in, a, in the roof that need to be cladded with probably a two by six on each side or at least on one side. Very little uh, damage structurally to the house itself. Uh, Mr. Westfall is, uh, in fact, working on uh, the building and uh, has his primary concern on the contractor was for electrical work, uh, not for the actual building work itself. Uh, but uh, he's in the process of working on it. Uh, he has retained a contractor to help him with some elements of it, but uh, it seems to be a uh, in process uh, project and I'm sure once you get some of the windows in and, and uh, some of the structural stuff done that proceed a little faster. Did he obtain permits for all this? I haven't checked recently but he, he has to have Well permits. I know he has to have them. He had to have them when he was doing the work for the six years before that fire happened too. When he was uh, taking everything out of the building that was there when the previous owner had it and, and doing construction work on it and everything. And that was a long, drawn-out part. 
and we in the neighborhood are really just concerned the fact that it's going to stay the way it is for another six years if, if Mr. Westfall continues to do the work himself. Uh, we're a little heartened by you know, the fact that he thought he might be able to get a contractor to do it, uh, but uh, it's, it's one of those eyesores that's becoming more prominent in that particular neighborhood, as, as you're well aware, the, some of the houses there. and. and uh, my neighbors, I, I don't look at it that often, but I've got neighbors that live right around that that are constantly hounding me about it, and that's uh, that's the problem with that part. So, and I know you understand that too. Mm. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Clements? I have a couple comments. Uh, Rich, I know the, the housing enforcement side of what you have done for many, many years is probably one of the least um, uh, favorable <laughs> occupations in this in the city. Uh, the um, You have to come to the meetings and basically provide information to the Housing Enforcement Board that a piece of property is not meeting the standards of the codes and so forth. And, um, you know, we, we look back on what happened with Ritchie and Tucker Street in the year <coughs> that uh, we were involved with that. Um, I know you're retiring the end of June, but it might be helpful from your perspective to provide the council and the enforcement board what are the greatest challenges that this position has and the city has in getting things done on a timely basis and the necessary follow-up uh, that's going to be required if we indeed want to enforce these uh, ordinances and codes and statutes. That's one of my personal frustrations that we don't seem to be on top of those, um, you know, you got 90 days to do this, okay, the 90 days is up and it's not getting done. But from your perspective, I think it'd be helpful for you to really sort of provide uh, what are the greatest challenges that you see and have seen, and we need to move forward. If, if indeed we want to have a, uh, enforcement for <coughs> bad dogs, it doesn't do any good if you don't enforce it. And uh, I see this in the same, <coughs> same light. I'd also suggest that we do have a housing enforcement meeting. We haven't had one for five or six months. And um, I think that's important for us to do. And part of the home rule that we've agreed to do is to provide the city with a little bit of uh, potential opportunity to get money, quite frankly, to build a fund up so that we can do some things that we currently can't do. Uh, so I would, I would ask Rich, I mean, he's been doing this for years, mm -hmm. and there's got to be challenges and frustrations, and let's, let's get some recommendations from him. There's uh, actually three or four things that are right, um, uh, and it's the right timing. Uh, number one, um, the housing enforcement officer as such has never really had a budget, so you haven't put any money behind the desire to get rid of some of these properties. Uh, in my tenure uh, doing this job, there's only been a couple of properties that the city has actually gotten to the point that they took them down, the city itself took them down. Uh, the problem is we've never gotten a dollar back from any of those actions. And that's, a, that's an issue. That's not only an issue for Buckhannon, that's an issue for any place. So to some extent, you've got to go look for some funding to actually do these things. And I think. Uh, Number two, uh, which is going to be very helpful if you get it in place, is the home rule be able to go in and, and actually ticket somebody and, and demand a payment uh, within X number of days or whatever if in fact it's not done. Right now all we can do is apply a lien and we've been in that trap more than once. Uh, the city's been in that trap where you can apply a lien but you're never going to see the money. It's going to go through the court system, uh, property gets sold or what have you, and it, it just, it's never ending. Uh, there's two other areas that I think are really going to help. One is 
there have been some very significant changes in the state law, which actually became effect July 1, 2014, which requires a lot of uh, attention to <coughs> residential properties. Prior to 2014, you did not have a great deal of um, emphasis. We, we always have been very close to watch commercial properties. Uh, we have more authority on commercial properties because they typically uh, require an occupancy permit. Uh, and consequently, when, uh, when a commercial property is nearing completion, whether it's a new building or remodel or whatever it happens to be, whether it's a hospital or retail establishment or, or an auto body shop, uh, they have to have their plans submitted and approved by the state farm marshal. And the city of Buchanan requires that we also have a letter from the contractor, or not contractor, but architect or engineer, that says in fact that that was built according to code. And we can enforce those, and we can and do uh, hold their occupancy permit until we receive those documents. Now that's not an inspection on our part, but it is a requirement that they meet certain minimum standards as far as the state's concerned. State has increased that now that you have to have an occupancy permit for everything, including uh, residential property, including single and duplexes and so on. Uh, that raises the state considerably. Uh, it's going to be much more demanding in terms of building codes and, and so on. The other thing is, I uh, have been grandfathered in because I started this job back about 1985 someplace. In terms of being certified by the state, I attended a number of classes for building code enforcement and so on, but I'm the very first one to say I am not uh, certified by the state to uh, manage and enforce building codes. My replacement will be. Uh, that's a requirement of the job now. It's no longer, it can't be grandfathered in. So I think those four areas are going to do a tremendous amount to, uh, and we're going to have to ease into it. This is not the kind of thing you're going to have to be able to change overnight. But we have some absolute um, uh, gross violations of building codes and health standards uh, and the like within some owner-occupied homes in this, in this town. Uh, we do have some leverage over the rental property. But uh, even that's somewhat minimal, or has been minimal until now. Well, Rich, I, I would ask uh, council that um, you know in the next next 30 days that we have an, an enforcement housing enforcement board meeting, and that you have provided in the past a, uh, a list of five or 10 or 15 properties, and you sort of ranked them in priority about these are things that we must get done. Good. Would, would that be appropriate? Yeah, I actually have one scheduled next week. All right. I'll just take the kind of okay. Before the consolidated board meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And do you have... I think the only reason we missed the last one was uh, weather. Yeah. And, um, and you have a uh, you have a list prepared to... I always have a list prepared. Okay. <laughs> and, and one of the problems is, you know, when you talk about that list, you know, we get... Uh, 5, 10, 15, or, you know. But if you want to look at housing within the city right now, particularly residential housing, we probably have, and, th and this is a guesstimate based upon uh, driving around and trying to keep track of homes and so on, but I would say we have 100 to 150 vacant homes in the city. A and some of them are absolutely deplorable. Uh, some of them that are occupied are absolutely deplorable. Uh, and, you know, it's, uh, it's somewhat difficult to convince people that they ought to keep up their own property. But uh, it does impact the neighboring property. Not only how they keep the outside, but how they keep the inside as well. Do you think there's over 100? Very easily, yeah. Really? yeah. You'd be amazed how many vacant homes there are in this town. Go ahead, Mary. Oh, Mr. Clements, first of all, I wanted to say I hope your wife is feeling better and healing after her accident. She's doing much better, thank you. Okay, good. Tell her I said hello. Uh, the next thing is I had sent an email out last week or something about the, and you said you'd look into it over that way. Did you go by? You, and, you had about eight inches of snow on that top oh, of that right, right after that. Okay. And uh, in fact, the next day, 
So I did not make it over then, and I've, I've been a little busy with my housekeeping have, duties, but, yes. but I will get to it. I've got I, another I, complaint today, and it's supposed to hit uh, 50 this weekend, so maybe we'll get all that good stuff cleaned up. I will tell you, and I don't know in that particular case, although I'm, I've had that particular name before, uh -huh. uh, people need to realize that when they pile stuff out along the road just because they're tired of looking at it, the neighbors get real tired of looking at it. Ooh, but a lot, of, a lot of the times the reasons it stays is because they owe us money. The city does not go out and pick up this stuff for free. Uh, I mean, they you know, certainly they have their trash bill every week, but if they don't, uh, if they are in arrears on their uh, water bill or their utility bill, uh, we're not sending the crew out to now pick up uh, a mound of trash in their front yard. Oh. So, you know, if you see a pile of trash piled up and it's there and it's there and it's there, it's not, and they may not call us. I mean, we, we, can't, uh, we can't just drive around and pick right. this stuff up. That, you know, if we start that, boy, uh, everybody just stop paying their bill and we throw it out and then we pick it up for free. So unfortunately, it's uh, usually a case where uh, an individual is, has moved in arrears, just stuck it with us, uh, whatever the case may be. If, if, they, if they actually moved and have a bunch of junk and trash out there, you know, that's one of the things that if we have this fund, eventually with the home rule we could go pick that up and that's part of the part well, of the a lot of times quite right. frankly and ambi can waste and uh, <clears throat> add to this if she likes but uh, quite frankly a lot of our uh, non-paying customers are repeat non-paying customers uh, and they may move but they don't move that far and so they'll come back in with another family member and sign up for services again and then we get stuck with the bill. We had a, a gentleman in here, um, I guess it was right after, yeah, it was right after Christmas. And, you know, it, it's an entertaining job sometimes, but this gentleman <laughs> came in and, and he was in tears on the other side of the window. Uh, it turned out I was the, uh, I guess I was the only supervisor in, uh, in the building at the moment, so I had to talk to him. But, uh, it was, uh, you know, saps, saps <coughs> about how he, he didn't have any money to pay his water bill. It's, he had all these Christmas bills. Of course, he's standing there in a brand new uh, outfit. Uh, it looks like he hadn't missed too many meals, kind of like me. And, and yet, he didn't have money to pay his water bill. And he was all <coughs> upset because his mother was ill and, and they had no water. Um, you know, I'm sorry, but uh, we can't just give this stuff away. It, it costs money to uh, uh, process the water. It costs money to send trucks out to pick up the trash. It costs money to take it to, to the landfills. It costs money to, to dump it there and so on. And somehow people just think, well, the city will take care of it. Uh, that, that's, that's a difficult predicament we get into in many cases. Go ahead, Ron. How long must the neighbors and the, and the other citizens that are good paying customers suffer with the bad paying customers garbage and trash in his yard before the city will pick it up and turn it away? Give me a budget, I'll be glad to pick it up tomorrow. So in other words, it's going to stay there forever without a budget? What we can say is we do not have a policy addressing that. And then that would include funding it. Am I correct? We have no policy in place if they fail. Well, to there, are, there are cases where you know I will go in and authorize, but I don't do that very often. I think that's one of the issues we really have to take a serious look at in the future. Well, you know, if if my neighbor in across the street, right in front of my house, put stuff out and they hadn't paid their bill for six months and and, and and it was just stuck there and, and they moved, I'd be rather upset as a taxpayer that the city is not taking that trash away. Uh, there seems to be some responsibility for the city, whether budgeted or not, that a truck can be sent up that way and picked it up and, and hauled it away after a certain period of time. Uh, whether it be a month or whatever, uh, are we going to let it just sit there and become smelly and rot and everything else? 
or are the neighbors going to have to get together and shovel it into the back of their car and go with it? Well, we bring that up with a consolidated board. Well, it's, it's a, no, he brings up a good point. It, yeah, it be a it's a question that, uh, that I'm sure everybody, if they're in that situation, would feel the same. Sure. Any other questions for Mr. Clemens or comments? Um, thank you, Rich. We appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good evening. Um, we're all good evening. Mr. McCauley, City Attorney. Thank you. A few updates. <clears throat> you, I mentioned to you at the December 18th meeting that we had everything wrapped up in the Angus lawsuit except receiving the dismissal order, and I think it was that next day that it arrived at City Hall, and it's in your packet. So as a matter of uh, finality, that <coughs> dismissal order is, has uh, ended that case. Um, I, I'm almost... Uh, apprehensive to knock wood and say we don't have any current litigation pending because that means tomorrow we'll probably get sued twice but uh, it's in my 32 year tenure there have been very few times when i could say we don't have a pending litigation and i i don't think we have any right now unless you're gonna uh, talk about the situation with mr ludlow's case in charleston that's that's really not a court case so uh, i think we're in good shape right now uh, a couple of other updates, and then the main thing I want to talk to you about is the uh, just this <clears throat> fairly rough draft of the uh, fire fee ordinance. I would ask you, Mr. Edwards, if the council uh, might not uh, move to authorize you to execute the mutual aid agreement, assuming that there uh, aren't any uh, substantial changes requested by any of the other entities, uh, Chief Gregory mentioned the very minor uh, language that the city of Weston has already requested, and I think their city attorney has weighed in with that, and we're expecting formal approval from them any time now. And I think he's also had some discussion with Sheriff Kaufman, who thinks the thing is fine, but I think he wants to run it past Mr. Godwin first. And hopefully the, uh, the folks in Lewis County will be on board too. But rather than have to wait, if you get approval from everybody else here in just the next few days, if you could be authorized to sign that, I would love to be able to have that in place when Mr. Elenfeld comes back on February 2 uh, for the next uh, big meeting. So uh, if that's the will of the council, I'd, I'd sure right. encourage you to authorize that execution. Um, <coughs> it's just a resolution, right? Well, this is rough, a rough copy. Is this just rough drafts, or are you fairly resolute, except for the suggestions made by the other two entities, that this is going to be your well, final? The document that I went over with you last time was a draft, but it was what I was proposing as a final draft, okay. subject to the other entities' approval. What I'm hearing from Chief Gregory is, is there's been preliminary thumbs up from everybody and rather than have to wait and do this at a meeting yeah. in February, if they all come back in the next three weeks at some point and say, yeah, we're signing it, here it is. I'd like you to be authorized to sign it on behalf of my can. Um, does everyone on the council understand what Dan's asking for? No. Okay. Point it to me. I can, I, I'm either oh. missing it it's, uh, or it's not in my pack. It's the first page after oh. me. It's well, the, that's why I turned it yeah. over. <laughs> Let me scan over it real quick. It's the same document that I went over. Yeah, we, went, yeah. Um, we had the opportunity to review it, see okay. if there's anything that we saw. Right. Um, okay. Well, there's, there's no cost involved in this yet. Not, not, no, no this, this is not, uh, I want to be sure that we're clear on this. This is just the next step in what could evolve as a formal uh, drug and violent right. crimes task force, force. Right. Uh, but this does not establish that yet. So it's it's not as though oh gee you guys got to come up with as a result of executing this you got to come up with two hundred thousand uh, dollars next month or something like that. That's that's on down the pike. Don't, that, that's separate and apart from this. This just formalizes the opportunity of these four police agencies together with the state police to work together to do what they're already doing informally anyway, which is having this investigative sharing on a right. monthly basis. Uh, if there was um, a situation, let's say there's going to be a major drug raid uh, on the lewis Upshur County line and all of the agencies were going to be involved, uh, this allows our officers to be dispatched 
across the Lewis Upshur County line to help out their brethren uh, with the Western Police Department and the Lewis County Sheriff's Department. And conversely, if we had something big that happened here, uh, and it wouldn't have to be a drug bust, it could be a terrorist activity, a shooting, a disaster, God forbid, anything. something like that, they can come here without liability concerns because we would have this all legitimized by this agreement. That, that's the reason I'd really like to get this done sooner than later. Sooner the better. I, does I, this I, take a motion? It does. Yes. I, I think I think we should do it. But you know, they're this 50 years from now, uh, these law enforcement agencies will all be under one operation anyway. Yeah, oh, maybe not that long. I would like to make the motion that we allow the mayor to uh, apply his signature to, to the uh, mutual aid agreement at such time as it becomes necessary. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, anything else, Mr. McCauley? We have another meeting tomorrow uh, with Peter Brown on the Sudden Lake franchise stuff. I think all of the fence stuff at the top of Cemetery Hill has uh, been resolved. Uh, working on some property matters, the Deer Creek deed has still not been uh, finally finalized, but it's almost there. Uh, ordinances 385, 386, and 387 that were uh, passed on final reading at your December 18 meeting will all go into effect uh, this uh, Sunday, uh, January 18. So uh, that, that's just a, it's, it's about to happen. Uh, Mr. Thomas asked about the 2,000 gallon uh, minimum water thing. That is a pretty much standard fare that the Public Service Commission requires municipalities to put in their tariff. And uh, I don't know how many water cases I've done since May of 83, but there's been a few. And uh, that's, that's just their stock standard kind of thing. Uh, as uh, Kelly Arnold indicated, you could probably go to a, even a higher minimum if you wanted to, but uh, I, I'm not aware of a lower than 2,000 gallon minimum. There may be, and you, you, it's something that could be looked at, but uh, when you start to think about 2,000 gallons over a 30-day period, you're only talking about 63 gallons a day, and uh, I don't know how many gallons every time you flush a commode or, Bye. you know, do a load of laundry, but, but it's, it, it adds up pretty, uh, pretty quickly, pretty substantially, so it's 2,000 gallons isn't, isn't a whole lot of water. Um, just a, just a one other uh, quick thing is I think I mentioned this, but the, the, uh, Mr. Elenfeld will be here February 2nd. Matt's uh, investigative meeting is February 4th, February 2nd, February 4th. So we may try to consolidate those two meetings together. And as a consequence of that consolidation, since the folks in Weston were supposed to host the next one, Mr. Edwards, that meeting could possibly be moved over to Weston. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on that, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, the, the main thing that I've got to discuss with you this evening is uh, this ordinance, which is in, uh, my two little grandsons were at the house the other night and I made them chocolate chip cookies and they bit into it and they both kind of grimaced. It wasn't done. I had to put it back in the oven. I'm telling you right now, these cookies aren't done. <laughs> We got a little bit more to, uh, to do with this, but uh, I think this is a good skeleton of uh, if it's the will of the council ultimately as you take up your matters on January 26 and into the 1st of February, I've got this tentatively down for a first reading on uh, your first meeting in February at the February 5 meeting. That's probably aggressive, but uh, in any event, uh, I'm not going to read all the whereases. Uh, but I will give you a little history lesson. Uh, Buchanan established its first fire protection fees uh, way back in 1966. Uh, so we're coming up fast on 50 years of charging uh, the residents and the businesses of Buchanan for fire protection. Now, uh, from 86 until the end of 1982, the quantity of the fee was determined by a multiplier 0 0.002 of property value. That was the manner uh, by which 
the fire fee was calculated, and then whatever that fee was, that was an annual fee, divided by 12, and you'd pay it. Um, the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals, in a case brought against the city of Wheeling in 1982, declared in that litigation that the use of assessor-generated property values to establish what fire fees would uh, be allowed to be charged by municipalities was unconstitutional in the state of West Virginia. There are other states that still use that criteria, but it's not permitted in the state of West Virginia. <coughs> so there had to be a change made. There was an emergency ordinance done, which was Ordinance 222 of the city of Buchanan, which was uh, put into place, the new rates, based upon a combination of uh, flat rates for residents, $1.50 a month, and then on businesses, uh, depending upon the revenue of the business, uh, which were both authorized uh, means, the Supreme Court of Appeals in that Wheeling case said there are other ways to do this, but you can't do it this way, basically. So Buchanan used a hybrid method where relative to uh, residents, a fee actually of $2 per <coughs> month was charged. Um, and then the fluctuating depending upon the amount of revenue against businesses. About six months into that cycle in 1983, Actually, it was five months. It was in May of 83, because that's when I came to Buchanan. And one of the first things that meetings I attended on June 2 was a final reading of Ordinance 224, uh, which reduced the amount of the resident fee from $2 a month to $1.50 a month. So there hasn't been an increase in the fire fees in Buchanan since January 1 of 1983. There's been one action taken about five months into the process, but that was to reduce it from $2 a month to $1.50 a month for residents. During the last now 32 plus years, it's been $1.50 a month uh, for all residential dwelling houses. It doesn't make any difference whether it's a 12 by 40 uh, trailer or whether it is a Taj Mahal place with 8,000 square feet. If it's a residence, it's $1.50 a month. The model which you have before you tonight would be uh, a tiered model based upon square footage. Uh, Mr. Doss has spent a good bit of time coming up uh, with uh, some of these uh, provisions that I have incorporated into this ordinance. And uh, I think any good ordinance probably doesn't completely reinvent the wheel. This is actually very uh, close to being the model that Bridgeport has used for uh, some time now. Uh, just quickly, get, I'm going to read those whereas paragraphs just because I think it's uh, good stuff for everybody to be aware of. Whereas the Council of the City of Buchanan since March 21, 1966, through the enactment of ordinances number 137, 222, and 224, has provided for the imposition and collection of fees for the City's Fire Department, providing fire protection services throughout Buchanan's corporate limits, and whereas the City of Buchanan is specifically authorized pursuant to Chapter 8, Article 13, Section 13A of the West Virginia Code as amended to provide emergency fire service protection within the corporate limits of the City of Buchanan and to impose by ordinance upon the users of the service such reasonable rates, fees, and charges to be collected in the manner specified by ordinance and whereas the council heretofore ordered the reconstruction and increase of said fee effective July 1, 2015, and now desires to amend and revise ordinance number 225 in accordance with its prior direction, <coughs> now therefore be it ordained and enacted by the council of the city of Buchanan as follows. First, as it's been called since 1966, this ordinance shall continue to be known as the city of Buchanan's fire protection service fee ordinance, and then it's just going to take me another couple of minutes to read these findings of council. The council of the city of Buckhannon hereby makes the following findings. A. The city of Buckhannon has operated a municipal fire department for many decades. However, the city council has not increased its fire protection service fees in Buckhannon since January 1, 1983. B. The city's costs and expenses in providing the reasonable and necessary personnel, training, vehicles, and equipment to offer fire protection service for the community have increased substantially during the past 32 plus years. C. 
previously and at all times since January 1, 1983, and beginning with the city's effectuation of ordinance number 222, the city's fire protection service fees have been established on a flat rate basis for all <coughs> residential properties and on a revenue generated basis for commercial properties. D. A number of other West Virginia municipalities currently establish their fire protection service fees based upon the square footage of improvements, that is buildings and other structures, versus flat rates for residential properties or revenue generated models for commercial properties. E. The City Council now believes that the adoption of a square footage model shall prove more fair and equitable to the residents and businesses of the City of Buckhannon versus the flat rate and revenue generated models. F. The express purpose and intention of this ordinance is to substantially increase the total rev revenues realized by the City of Buckhannon for providing fire protection services within the corporate limits. Then what follows under Article 3 would be the proposed fee rates. And under the residential, there are uh, two uh, different uh, models that tie in with square footage. Uh, any property consisting of 2,500 square feet or less, the fee would be $3 a month, which is twice the current rate. Or in the case of dwelling houses, mobile homes, apartments that are more substantial in size, 2,501 square feet or more, it would be a fee of $5 per month. When we get into the commercial structure under B of this Article 3, uh, there are more tiers. The first tier is a fee of $12.50 per month against each commercial, industrial, or other non-residential building or structure consisting of 2,500 square feet or less. <coughs> Two, a fee of $25 per month against each commercial, industrial, or other non-residential building or structure consisting of 2,501 square feet, but not exceeding 7,500 square feet. The next tier is $50 a month for buildings exceeding 7,501 square feet, but not exceeding 22,500 square feet. And then finally, if you exceed 22,500 square feet, it would be a fee formula rate of four and a half cents per square feet divided per month uh, with the maximum fee being uh, permitted against any particular property owner entity of $1,500 a month. If you do the math real quickly, that means that West Virginia Wesleyan College that I'm told <coughs> pays about $5,000 a year, their annual fee would go up to $18,000 a year. Similarly, Walmart, which pays $15 a month for everything that goes on at Walmart, $180 a month, Walmart's fire protection fee is going to be increased to $18,000 a year. Uh, as you look at your models to generate revenue, as you start looking at the bigger structures at places like St. Joseph's Hospital, the high rise in uh, West Virginia Wesleyan College, Walmart, Lowe's, uh, those entities are going to see a very substantial increase in, in fire phase. So uh, that's the model that is before you. That's the one that Mr. Doss understood the council to want to start pursuing. I will tell you, I'm pretty comfortable with the first uh, three articles. I did some cutting and pasting with regard to articles four and five that. Uh, I just think need a little more uh, tinkering with and some uh, language clarifications. We may want to add a definitions section to this, uh, but uh, I, again, I think it's more than half-baked, but not yet fully ready to consume. So uh, maybe between now and your meeting on January 26, and then even into your first meeting in February, if uh, maybe council could take a look at this and start uh, processing uh, whether uh, this is the direction you want to go, that would be a, a good next step. That's that's all I have. I've talked too long already with a sore throat this evening, but I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have about this. Graph. David, you, you used 18000 as the cap? Yes. Uh, if, it, if the maximum fee would be $1,500 per month, if you times that by 12, the most that you would exact under this graph 
from any single single entity would be eighteen thousand dollars. Fifteen hundred a month times twelve would be eighteen thousand dollars. Because the square footage for for Westland would be, you know, there, there's nothing compared to it in our city because of the you know, you know the residential halls and all the buildings they have. So I don't want them to have a heart attack saying they're going to have to pay X amount of dollars based on the. Uh, number of square feet they have. Yeah. It's capped at 18 it's grand. Ca it's capped at a maximum under this draft model at no one. Walmart, St. Joseph's Hospital, West Virginia Wesleyan College, nobody would pay more than $1,500 a month. This is now that's, that's a substantial increase over what they've been paying because there have been an increase in 32 years. That's fire only. That's not looking that is fire only. This has nothing to do with police protection yet. Okay. We're just looking at fire right now. And, and in fact, I, I, I know the council and uh, uh, Chief Gregory and Mr. Doss, uh, we've all had conversation. Um, the police model has been the same as the fire model all these years. Does it, is police protection the same thing as fire protection? My thinking is, is you could have a jewelry store with uh, millions of dollars, maybe, worth of inventory in a very small store. And it might make more sense to have um, a revenue-generated model for police protection, maybe, uh, versus uh, the square footage thing with fire. Fire is more about looking after being prepared to battle a fire, uh, respecting improved space. Uh, the cost of being in that state of preparedness to fight a fire at Walmart uh, or uh, the Performing Arts Center at West Virginia Wesleyan College is going to be different than some little tiny hole-in-the-wall place uh, that uh, you know, might have five or six hundred square feet. So uh, I think, as I understand it, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the model that uh, the, the city mothers and fathers you know, want to advance to change what we've been doing for the past 32 years and go more to the Bridgeport model, which is the square footage tiered model. Yeah. Off the subject, but just considering what you just said about maybe the police uh, fees being based on a, um, uh, uh, a, a um, money raised or income <clears throat> based fee, uh, where would that information come from? It, it certainly won't come from the B&O taxes. Uh, do we have a system to get that information from? It would actually come from the B&O taxes. Would, Every would business is required to report even if they go under that million dollar threshold and that's how we've gathered the data. Okay. And we're really not as in critical a position as we are with the fire department right now within the oh, police yeah, department. Oh yeah, I understand that. And with the home rule, uh, one of our home rule pillars, uh, we're also looking at the part-time officers within there, which still fits pretty much within their budget, except you're going to learn a little bit more about what they want for their budget during the next few <laughs> weeks. Um, well, and if, if, Mr. Edwards, if you're looking at potentially substantially increasing staffing with your fire department. I know that's one of the things that's being bandied about. If you're going to add two or three firefighters, that, that really would be the more pressing of the two. That's not to say that you can't put together a police uh, ordinance pretty quickly, too, but my direction was fire is most important. So. All right. Um, Mr. Osborne, did you have a question, sir? Yeah, I would just like to say, as a citizen, anytime my fees are raised, I get upset, but I understand their need. However, in this case, <clears throat> I'd just like to encourage Mr. Doss and City Council to think about the future needs of the fire department, because if you raise the fees now, I'm okay with it. If you raise them again in five or six years, a lot more people will be upset. So make sure the limits you set now will carry as far into the future as possible. So just keep that in mind as you're considering these fees. Yeah, you bring up a really good point, Mr. Osborne. It's something we've been dealing with within a lot of other departments. It seems that we've waited, we have, we it seems that governments have a habit of putting off and putting off, thinking that it's in the better good not to erase at a small minimum amount within a reasonable amount of time. What will end up happening, we'll wait until after 20, 30 years <coughs> until, oh, now we need to change the rate. Then the rate's going to be a substantial one. It's not going to be something that can be <coughs> gradually taken into your budget. So. Uh, I think that's something that our departments are really working hard at, and I know this council would really like to address. 
uh, in the future, and we've all brought it up within our different boards on how that happens. And it's just a matter of, just like I saw in the paper today that, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, gas company, Mountaineer Gas, is raising theirs after two years, four point something percent, adding an extra 30 some odd dollars to your gas bill. Um, and that's substantial for anybody with a real budget. Uh, that has to with, live within the budget. So I guess the point I'm getting at is that you bring up a really good point that you got to have small increments to stay with. We think at this point um, we could con we would say in the affirmative that yes, it's within a five-year plan that this amount would actually be able to facilitate it probably longer once you adjust on the different businesses. Now, if we get bigger businesses in, then of course you know that could also change as well. But thank you for the question. Well. I just have to say that if you go back and look at the income brought in from the fees in 1983 for both the fire and the police department, look at what their departmental costs were and what percentage was given to them based on the fire and police fee, you would be shocked about the way the percentages have changed today. And that's one of the issues that government <coughs> agencies have to deal with is you need increases in fees if you're going to continue the, the uh, services. And the B&O tax, quite frankly, when we, what was that implemented, David, 11 years ago? Was oh, it gosh. Years the first ago? one was uh, back in the early 90s, uh, but it's, it's been a progressive expansion of it for the last uh, 22, 23 years. Yeah. And the B&O tax has enabled us to sustain the fire and police department without increasing those fees. Is, is that a fair statement to make? That's a, that's a correct statement. Yeah. And the fire department, the, the equipment alone, and the, the equipment alone and replacement cost of equipment has been going up and up and up and up and up. And we as a city have never really adjusted to that until now. And so it, it sounds horrific huge like you know we're going to be sucking the life out of somebody but really and truly we're we're doing what we're supposed to be doing now i think is that the right way of saying it michael we're planning ahead for the future i think oh sure we are and, 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 the, and the other statistic which is uh, you know mind-boggling to me is when uh, mr clement said there may be 150 yeah. unoccupied homes well that probably are. that right there hits your impact as far as collection of well, things. There's another facet of this that I mentioned uh, to Mr. Doss. Uh, the square footage model uh, can help you with these properties that need to be raised. And here's why. Uh, let's say I'm sitting there with this old place that I really should have torn down five years ago. And, and we know the places around town that <laughs> are in that condition. Um, and maybe you got uh, two or 3,000 square feet, one of those old three-story places, and it's like, I'm going to have to pay what? And it's like, it's, boy, this is the time. It's going to make more sense for me now to raise that, invest the money in tearing it down so I won't have to pay those outrageous fire fees to the city of Buchanan. So, so there is a little impetus there to, uh, that, that you can you know, use to help uh, accomplish that other purpose. I think I've done a great job at it myself. What we're going to ask you to do is take a look at it, read through it, and uh, bring it back on the 26th, and we'll discuss it more. I would almost like to put this as part of our town hall meeting. I know we want to get it through soon, but I feel that it, since it does affect the citizens in this way, that we should always give them the opportunity, and we're going to have our first town hall meeting. We'll talk about this later. We'll set a date. Uh, we could do that on next uh, at our next meeting as well. Well, Mr. McCauley thought he'd have this ready in final form at the fifth. You, that, that's your goal, is that correct? I, I can, but, but that's that's up to the council as to whether you want to proceed that quickly. I I, I was being aggressive with February five and nineteen as you two readings, and, and the other thing that I would mention to you is I think I had it in one of the whereases, but it's also worthy of uh, repetition. I, I, I think Mr. Doss was trying to be sensitive to uh, the budgeting process of places like Westland and St. Joseph's Hospital, even Walmart, they've got budgets, to uh, do this on a fast track, pass it twice in February and say, okay, in March, by golly, the money's going to be rolling in. Yeah. That's really, that, that's, that's a little bit unfair to the taxpayers and the fee. Uh, so we had this set up to be 
uh, come effective July 1. Yeah, that it gives them a few months yeah. to start yeah. doing their rebudgeting process and knowing that there's going to be some increases coming. All right. Well, any other questions for Mr. McCauley? Comments? Thank you for explaining it so well. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, talk about that more in our next meeting. Uh, what we have next is no correspondence. Is there anything that anybody sees that should be taken off of the consent agenda? Uh, we have approval of the minutes, approval of the building and wire permits, approval of the payment of the bills, and notice of a special meeting of council on January 28th at 6 p.m. 26th. 26th at 6 p.m. Um, did anybody want anything taken out of that agenda to discuss? All right, then I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, I have a second. Any discussion on that? All, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> uh, strategic issues for discussion and vote. We have resolution 2015-01, our first one. Community Participation Grant of the mowing equipment. Mr. Doss, is that you, sir? Yes, I'll, I'll take that, Mayor. Um, if you all recall, in the summer, we had received a 2014 Governor's Community Participation Grant, uh, I think from Senator Barnes at that time. Uh, the amount of that was uh, $11,500. We were going to use that money to buy a zero-turn mower, which we have acquired, and actually we have monies remaining that we did not expend. Uh, Jerry Arnold was in contact with folks from the, uh, <clears throat> from the governor's office and basically they told us if we had a resolution that council passed, um, we could make a, 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 a activity change or a project change to that project and utilize that $2,800, that remaining balance uh, for additional mowing equipment and ground maintenance. Uh, they just need something from council uh, making a request to change the scope of that activity, then that frees up that that remaining $2,800 for us to use. Gotcha. That's all. <clears throat> Any questions for Mr. Dawson, resolution 2015-01? Then I understand what we're doing there. Mm -hmm. I would entertain a motion then to approve resolution number 2015-01. So move. Dash mm -hmm. one. I'll second. I got a motion and I have a second. Any discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Post and sign. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have Trevor. Resolution 2015-02, removal of the stoplights at Main Street and Canal Street. Um, and I know we have somebody signed up to discuss that, but we'll let Mr. Doss explain the process here first. There's, there's several new members to council, but council in the past, um, as everyone knows, uh, at the other, other traffic lights in town, had partnered up with the Department of Highways, uh, and they had done a survey, a survey on traffic, traffic control and traffic flow. And it made an indication that uh, if the city of Buchanan was willing, those lights could actually be flipped to a, a flashing light, if you will, to a four-way stop. Uh, council at that time gave their blessing for the Department of Highways to implement that on those three intersections. And ultimately, everybody knows the, the story behind that. Um, <clears throat> then there was a discussion after a period of time of uh, those lights being four-way stops. There were some issues from the public. And there was a determination made by council to go ahead and actually remove those flashing lights uh, and, and put a more defined stop sign up there uh, to not confuse individuals. Um, the Department of Highways requested that we pass a resolution, Mr. Thomas, I'm sure you recall that, um, that would authorize and per permit and give council's blessing for the Department of Highways to actually remove those, those flashing stop lights, which they've subsequently done. Um, the next uh, the next item was to take a look at the corner of uh, Kanawha and Main Street, um, and then it was Council's desire at that time to, to proceed with having those lights, traffic lights, turned to flashing stop lights, and ultimately that's where we're at today. Uh, the Department of Highways had made a request with Jerry Arnold to see if we were interested, and if Council was interested in actually having those lights removed like we've done the other lights. Um, and then this is just a resolution basically it needs to be in place that council supporting the removal of those stoplights at the intersection of Maine and Kanawha, which would complete the, um, the, the stops throughout the, that portion of downtown Buchanan. Very good. Um, <clears throat> does everybody on council understand what Mr. Doss is speaking of? Mm -hmm. This has previously been done by most of the councils before us. I will recognize Mrs. Strickland, is it? Yes, sir. Uh, to discuss whatever you'd like to discuss with us on that. Well, I appreciate that. Um, 
I'm a Buckhannon resident, grew up here, remember a bustling downtown, Liberty Lunch, Maggie's. I mean, you come downtown and just enjoy yourself for the day on this fat thing. Um, and, and it has distressed me greatly taking out the stoplights. Um, I personally wouldn't feel bad sitting at a stoplight and looking around in shop windows see what's changed, who's got a sale. Uh, it keeps, keeps me, I'm, I'm a shopper. Uh, I'm not a professional like most of you, but I am a shopper. Um, uh, it's, it's distressed me seeing the uh, public parking kind of going away. Uh, got, got a $25 ticket for parking in what I thought was a gigantic parking lot down uh, behind the Chinese restaurant, but uh, it's private too. Uh, not talking about parking, but talking about shopping. Um, and I, I personally feel like that uh, without the stoplights, the town is less safe for pedestrians. Uh, I think that um, pedestrian, pedestrian traffic uh, on Main Street is critical uh, for the shopping Main Street experience. Uh, you know, just pulling up in front of a store, uh, finding a space right in front of the store and, uh, isn't realistic. Um, the only one that I saw with the actual crosswalk is, is the one in front of the courthouse, which is the biggest intersection and not my favorite one. If I'm crossing the street, um, got to run. I mean, it's just for someone even older, I don't think it would be, uh, I, I feel like that people are, uh, are kind of being um, strayed away from downtown, uh, talking about shortcuts. Uh, the confusion of all the different lights. Um, I've avoided downtown. Um, I know how to do that. I'm not sure if that's the goal. If you don't, if you just want um, people to just zip through town, uh, bypass kind of situation. I think a couple of blocks away, we've got one. It's called I-79 <laughs> and 33 or whatever. You know, the interstate. Excuse me, it is 33 there, but. Um, it, it's just, it's been very distressing for me just as a shopper and a citizen in town to see the stoplights go away. I came through there today looking again at the situation. I see the stop signs. Quite frankly, they're, they're almost an eyesore, uh, all the stop signs. Uh, uh, yesterday I was coming uh, toward the city hall and I saw a gigantic truck. Didn't even slow down at the Kanawha intersection that you're talking about uh, with the flashing light. So uh, I'm not sure if they're confused about what a flashing light means, if, if more stop signs will make a difference, but uh, I liked having stop lights. Uh, for me, the merit of a town is how many stop lights do you have? Are you a one stop light town? Uh, I took great pride in that we were a four stop light town and to take them away just Where'd they go and where'd the money go? And I've heard all kinds of people talking about it and none of it's been positive. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> and, and you actually represent a lot of people that feel that way about the downtown. So let's you for stepping up on and, and addressing that as far as a lot of people <coughs> are concerned. Unfortunately, I wasn't around before um, the, when the decisions were made, but I do recall when it was done and I know traffic flow was a main concern. Uh, pedestrian safety still does main, maintain a high priority for us, and, uh, and we'll discuss that here in a moment. I, I added something to your packets. Dennis, you had something to say? Yeah, yeah Mayor, thank you for recognizing me. <coughs> Up until about a month ago, we had a uh, blind lady living on Thurman Avenue that would walk her leader dog downtown. Mm -hmm. And uh, more than once, uh, the, the dog would go to cross the street and get lost because there's no clues or cues for the leader dog to see with the with the stop signs. Before, when it had a stop light, you could push the button and the, the dog is trained to read the read the lights and then take the person across. Gotcha. So I just want to bring that to your attention. Thank you for that. Um, and you bring up a very valid point as well. Uh, how about the members of council? You got anything you want to say on this subject? Well, I've, I've been around the council for a while and uh, Mrs. Strickland, it was the observations you've made. Um, there were individuals that 
felt that removing the lights would actually provide a better pedestrian environment uh, than having having the traffic lights because if you if you hit the traffic lights just at the right time you can zip right on through town and, and not as you say stop at a stop light and uh, look at the different uh, uh, shops and so forth I, I think you know I, my concern was when we did this initially is how would people that did not have any vision um, handle the uh, not having the stoplight and I've talked to several and they had some concerns but they felt that they could uh, you know work with it so I've had a lot of comments on this about 90 percent of the people I've talked to uh, which is not a lot of people but you know enough that uh, they like the stop signs mm -hmm. rather than the uh, the traffic lights. But the problem we have, unfortunately, we just have a lot of people that don't pay any attention to anything, whether whether it's a stoplight or a traffic light. And you know, example of that truck. I mean, I think the I think the police ought to have a greater presence in our downtown. You know, whether it's enforcing the stop signs or enforcing the uh, cell phone uh, regulations or, you know, we just need to have people be aware of what they're doing to their fellow citizens by not observing laws. And, uh, you know, I, I think the goal was to improve and enhance the downtown <coughs> by removing the, uh, uh, the flashing lights in the, in the stop lights. I still think that's a, a laudable goal, and, okay. but we still need to, you know, improve in what we're doing. We we absolutely do. Um, anybody else, Mr. Peter? Please. Yes. Uh, one measure of safety that has uh, come about because of removal of the stoplights <clears throat> is the huge trucks that go through town now are required to stop every block. Before, if the light was yellow, they were speeding up to beat the yellow. And uh, that created a real traffic or hazard to the pedestrians, especially uh, in downtown Buchanan. Uh, now that they are required to stop, except for the one that you saw there, and I've seen that happen too, not just with the trucks, but uh, with uh, other drivers too that just don't stop. And, and I think that's just a matter of fact that they uh, are not familiar with what laws govern driving, not just in Buchanan, but in other cities and states. They're all practically the same. Um, but I, I do believe that the uh, removal of the stop lights and, and going to the stop signs has created a safer environment in downtown Buchanan because of the uh, traffic flow of the heavy trucks that go through. and. Uh, and believe me, that was a concern because I've stopped on Main Street and watched as many as 15 trucks in a 15 to 20 minute area go through town and all of them almost speeding up to beat the yellow. So I think it's become safer and that was my my concern. However, at the when we voted to do away with the stoplights, I voted against it because my constituents wanted me to do that <coughs> by my vote of like 25 to 19 that were in favor of keeping the stoplights. So that's the way I voted. I vote the way my constituents do most of the time. But I'm very thankful that we've done away with the stoplights, and uh, I, I would hate to see us go back uh, to another way. You know, I can't remember, Mr. McCall, how long ago you had made this suggestion about getting a a, a second Main Street. <coughs> is my mind yes. is my mind wrong there? Or? No, that's that's probably been I don't know. It's been a long time. Fifteen years ago, maybe. I don't know. Back <laughs> but, in the nineties. But that that was to provide even a greater environment for uh, for Buchanan in the downtown, and, uh, a traffic pattern that would be very uh, good for it. And that that's still something that maybe still do fifty <laughs> years now will be done. I like that Elkins downtown with the two main streets. Seems like they have right there. Um, what about you ladies? I, I just um, want to say that I, until probably the last year and a half, I was never one of these people that got out and walked down Main Street very much. <laughs> I do now. And, um, and I can tell you that I do enjoy 
and not enjoy. I do like the stop signs. What I don't like is people who are inconsiderate, okay? And it's the inconsiderate, unsafe drivers that are causing these issues downtown. And that's, that's all, all it is in a nutshell. Because I watch them and I want to yell out at them, you idiots, oh, why don't you that. stop? You know? <laughs> but I can't do that. Well, well no, I do I do that. You, but anyways, um, so I'm asking everybody that's a driver in Upshur County to pay attention to common courtesy and safety and driving etiquette when you're driving down Main Street. When you're driving anywhere, there's children out there. There's school buses that run down that Main Street that still stop today to let children off. Try the corner of Harden Street. It was, uh, you know, I, I just I like it like it is. Now, uh, Rose Clutter's going to shoot me. She hates it, you know, but she <laughs> she's a creature of habit, and then and 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 she she she's a wonderful person as you are, okay, but she just does not like change, and um, and we're we're working hard to rebuild. And, and change the image of our downtown, our historic downtown area, and slowing the traffic down and bringing people out there. And I see, I've seen the change. I've seen more people walking, and and even when it's cold, and um, and I like it. Thank you, ma'am. How about you, Robin? Well, I guess I've got to disagree. I don't like the stop sign being taken down. I think it's our job as council to look out for the safety of everyone, whether everyone driving is smart enough to know what to do at a four-way intersection. For those that won't do it, it's our obligation to make sure that anyone walking is safe. Uh, and that's what I worry about, is who is not going to pay attention. Also, I worry about Main Street disappearing. What are we doing to it? Are we making it a freeway, go straight down Main Street, zoom? If I had a business downtown, I'd be really upset if I put a lot of energy into my windows uh, trying to promote my business and the cars were flying down so fast they didn't turn around and look. So that's my opinion. All right. Um, that, those are well. I'll give one myself. Stop, stop, stop. Uh, as far as the pedestrian safety goes, we've got a few, quite a few options that I feel that when we go into budget talks that one of the main priorities <coughs> we should look at is at the end of your packet. You'll see an LED lighting system that um, is um, actually pedestrian crossing. It can be solar or it has the button, and it flashes LED lights. I mean, you're not going to miss this thing. And we could have them on each one of the four corners. They are not inexpensive, particularly if you wanted to go with a solar one, which would, of course, mm -hmm. uh, take no uh, energy from our parts. To do this, um, I have already engaged uh, Engineer Holland, Jay Holland, to um, to discuss with the DOH on actually putting these in. If we wanted to put these in, we have to put in, uh, we have to require a request more, I mean, they have to give us permission because that is a uh, state road. But it would be my suggestion then, as we go through, um, I've heard the calls from the citizens, particularly our, our pedestrians walking downtown. I walk downtown quite a bit doing business for the city. Um, I, being a larger fellow, can just step out into the traffic and most cars aren't going to try to hit me. They don't want to, you know, deal with the damage. But if you are in any way um, in a disabled capacity or um, challenged, it is very difficult. And I've sat out here and like you, Mary, I wanted to go out here and just stop the traffic to allow somebody to go across. There's a, a, a gentleman, a citizen that's in a wheelchair yep. that has a battle just to get across that yep. street. Um, this is activated by button. Um, if you would have missed that and you couldn't see that somebody's walking across, then uh, then you really shouldn't be driving your car at all as it is. Um, is there any other discussions on that? Um, I am going to put this in the budget as one of my priorities for. Uh, it's a matter of levity, you miss. A levity? Yeah. Really? I, I was. Levity? Well, it, yes, it, it's kind of uh, levitying, or is that a word even? Anyway, I was at, this, at the corner here at Main Street and Spring Street, and a gentleman on a bicycle was coming up Main Street, and he was sitting there, as he should, debating the laws just as if the automobiles. And a car comes down Main Street, does not stop, goes right on through and everything, and this gentleman on the bicycle yelled, You idiot! That's a stop sign! 
And I said, hey, buddy, way to go, way to tell him. He said, yes, and I'm going to tell him later because he works for me. Uh -uh. And so uh, people are looking out, uh, and people do. I tell people on Main Street uh, when I see them breaking the law, uh, hey, you know. I, yeah. So anyway, I yell a little bit. I know it's hard to believe. Isn't it? Yeah, I don't Mayor, they, they do have a lot of these um, things yeah. like this in larger cities yes. where traffic is a big, huge this problem. A, but they try to make the crossing of the streets easier for the pedestrians, and um, and and then it helps slows the yeah. uh, traffic too a little bit because they know that they have to stop. Yeah, yeah I would, think this would be a big difference. Yeah, it, it would. would. I think it would as well. So I want you guys to consider that. Yeah. But what, how, what would, uh, what's the pleasure as far as the council goes with resolution number 2015-02? Sir, I would make the motion that uh, we go along and, and pass resolution 2015-02, removal of the stoplight at Main and Kanawha Street. All right, I have a motion to pass resolution number 2015-02. Do I have a second? I'll we can have a discussion, but do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second, so we can continue the discussion if you want. Okay. Now, you're talking about the the big intersection? No, no, oh. Kanawha Street. Oh, Kanawha, oh, right Kanawha, there. Kanawha right the we, we, we okay. already have stop signs there. Yeah, yeah. okay. We, we never it's just the only flashing line. Yeah, that's the only flashing one now. Okay, yeah. yes, okay. So I have a I motion, I have a second. Any further discussion? Golf question. All right, I have a call from a question from Mr. Pugh. All in favor say aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Uh, we have resolution 2015 oh before I do that. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Strickland, well, thank you for, for coming in. Your, your memories of downtown Buchanan are just wonderful. And that's what I'd love to see Buchanan become again. It was a place where we could sit on the streets and, and, and talk to our neighbors and, uh, and, and, and be, be that way. <laughs> yes, I think, I think we all had the same goal. I just how you get didn't, how you get there. I didn't think you yep. know getting into uh, crosswalks was really the way to go about it. Uh, having having the guidance of the people just seem to respect the stoplights more than the stop signs. And rather than trying to change everybody, I just wanted it to be safe. I had a suggestion this week from somebody that suggested we pull up the asphalt and the blacktop off of Main Street down to the brick that was there beforehand and change the speed limit to 15 down Main Street and just having a beautiful brick paved street all the way from Route uh, 20 all the way to uh, the City Hall. That was when cool. I worked in town and I added in uh, a brick section in between their stoplights, they didn't take their stoplights out, but they made an additional crosswalk to enhance their downtown area. More a lot more traffic too. Just be glad we didn't put in those roustabouts. Isn't that what they call them? Oh, here? Roundabout? <laughs> <laughs> Safe to say that the, the council recognizes the pedestrian safety concerns downtown, and we're going to do everything we can do to help facilitate a much safer pedestrian and bicycle downtown. I have a question. Yes, Mr. Simons. I'm sorry. No. no. I think he insulted you, but I, I'll take that compliment. <laughs> um, speaking of of crosswalks yeah. what about in front of the post office and uh, every time they have a viewing a polling Sinclair I hate to drive up that way because you're not supposed to be making noise in front of a funeral home anyway but I've actually gotten in the habit of putting my window down so that I can talk to the people that are attempting to run through their crosswalks and a lot of the people going to the funeral homes for the viewing are elderly. You don't know how many times I have seen, you don't know how many times I've called the comm center and said, I have a license number. I just saw this person blow through the crosswalk in front of pollings and they've got flashing lights there when they have a viewing. So you know, you know, prepare to slow down and maybe stop. And somebody is going to get killed up there if not maimed. You bring up a good point, and I've, um, yeah, I've, I've been been out there before. Um, that's something we could bring up as far as the pedestrian crossings. Since there is already a warning sign and pedestrian crossings light there or sign, maybe we could put up one of these LEDs there. That's not but a there problem. are marked crosswalks at all intersections downtown too. 
the other. Well, but if you're not from here, you wouldn't realize that that is actually a special situation. I think you would because every city in the nation has marked crosswalks. Well, it's just that. people don't pay attention. They don't pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. So, All right. Okay. Um, let's move on to resolution 2015-03, the general fund budget revision, FY 2014-15. Yes, uh, it's about this time uh, every fiscal year that we do kind of a mid-year, if you will, budget resolution. Um, and that's that's what we're doing at, at this point. Um, there's really nothing that, that sticks out, um, kind of feel compelled to advise you of. A couple of interesting things. Um, the mayor's uh, repave sanitary uh, is an actual old line that, that we've been budgeting for several years. That is in relation to the, the sewer lines infrastructure that was put out at Lowe's we're no longer repaying that back so I actually zeroed out that line as part of my revision and also a line on the second page in our fire department's contract and hydrants uh, we we don't do that after we did our water rate increase that actually has been included in our water rate increase so I actually zeroed out that line as well and with zeroing out those two lines and making revisions off of that what actually ends up being about eighty four thousand dollars I was able to use that 84,000 and shift that around to other various lines within within those respected departments. So essentially what I'm telling you is with this budget revision, we did not in any way increase our budget. Uh, we just shifted some things around uh, to clean up some line items um, along the way. And this is something that we do at this point every year. You'll have another budget revision uh, in the end of the next quarter of the fiscal year. Uh, but for now, uh, that's really any the only significant thing after a report out of this. The, the lines that we're increasing are not, <clears throat> excuse me, very significant, with the exception of the council capital outlay, and that was just remaining monies that that we had out of that eighty-four thousand. Once we did our revisions, I just put in a council capital outlay that we can utilize it you know, at any other point. Maybe we can get the mayor's the mayor's crosswalk lights or something out of that. So. Anyway, that is the budget uh, resolution as presented, and I just, uh, that's my recommendation, council approve it, but I will need a roll call vote. He doesn't really get an option, the, the opportunity a lot to go through all those great numbers you went through college it's, for, so we got to allow him the You're your any motion, in motion as I mentioned earlier. I'm ready to make the motion. I'll second. I will entertain the motion. I have a motion by Mr. Pugh. I have a second by Mrs. Uh, Alba. Is there any discussion on... Call the question. Uh, Mr. Pugh calls for the question. Um, the question is, to approve resolution 2015-03, the general fund budget revision for 2014-2015. All in favor say aye. Roll aye. call. It's a roll call. Andy, may you call the roll, please. Robin. Yes. Mary. Yes. Ruth. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Yes. Uh, being a unanimous vote, it, uh, it is approved. Okay. The next thing we have is resolution 2015-04. I do like resolutions, by the way. <coughs> LWCF uh, City Batching Funds. Oh. What? Mr. Yes. Doss. Yes. Um, this is this is just federal bureaucracy at its yes. finest. Um, we did pass a resolution when we applied for this land and water conservation grant and showed them that we had dedicated that if we applied for the grant we would we would we would assist with the 50 percent required match for some reason they want another resolution that tells them that we are still going to do that and we have that in our budget which i will remind you we do have in our budget uh, that amount of sixty seven thousand seventeen dollars so this is just basically telling the federal government um, Department of Interior that we do have that money appropriated for that uh, for that program and again that program is the handicraft equipment and, and improvements to North Buchanan Park as much as I have asked for the ADA compliant equipment to be installed over there I would make the motion that we uh, accept and pass resolution 2015-04 I have a motion to pass resolution 2015-04 do I have a second I have a second uh, any discussion on that Oh, okay. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. <coughs> Second time around on that one. That's one roll call. Start the other day. Yes. <coughs> yes. 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 Mary. Yes. Uh, being a unanimous, unanimous decision, my motion does pass. We're unanimous. Okay. Um, we have under comments and announcements at this point, and we start off with Mrs. Albaugh today. Oh. I really didn't mean to be so mean to all the citizens out there when I started ranting and raving about poor driving etiquette and that kind of stuff. But when you see 
youngsters and elderly people and people with walkers and people in wheelchairs, it kind of gets your blood pressure steaming. Um, even blind people, okay? So I just beg your forgiveness if I've offended you, but I ask you please to drive safely and be courteous. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mary. Uh, Mr. Pugh. I have no comments except I uh, hope everybody enjoys the upcoming uh, snow we're going to get in the next week or two. And uh, we're due, so let's have Keep it. And that. God bless. I don't get to. Uh, Mr. Thomas, how about you, sir? No comments. Huh? Jeez. Mr. Thomas, with no comments. Thank okay. you, sir. Mrs. Simon. Well, I'd just like to say that I don't, um, I'm not against change. I embrace change. I just worry about the safety of our citizens. And uh, with the light that uh, the mayor has presented us or the signs, I think that uh, the, the, uh, it'll be a lot better for people wherever we're walking or, or, or even driving. So uh, I think we're moving forward. Thank you, Thank you Robin. Appreciate yeah. that. I have a few comments or things for you to take into consideration in the next few weeks. Um, uh, myself, Ron, and Mary attended a uh, beginning investigatory meeting on an art program. That, uh, it's a Buchanan public art program. It's been initiated by a um, local group. Um, they have introduced the idea that the city of Buchanan have public art within the open spaces that a lot of cities have incorporated within their programs. Um, that would be anything from temporary art to permanent art to building murals, you name it, they're discussing it. Uh, the city, I believe, and I've talked with Ron and Mary, uh, actually support this program, think it's actually a great idea, particularly as we're headed into the 2016 year. Um, I would like to ask you to keep that in your mind and consideration. There have been articles in the paper that are going to be hearing more about it. What we will end up doing is coming to you with a letter of support, maybe by the 26th, to the group um, supporting this as a city. It's just a letter of support. Ultimately, they would like to have us, um, if everything works out and all the planets align right, we could have a resolution to them that um, the city of Buchanan will support in a much more direct way. But we will hold off on that, just introducing that to you and to the citizens. The city is listening and prepared for that. Speaking of the 200th anniversary, um, we have that coming up next year. I would like to see us as a city um, start determining and planning how we would like to celebrate that as a bicentennial. It's a very special year. Um, my first thought, of course, I was a kid when it was 1976, but I recall what a big uh, issue that was, and it was a year-long celebration. I would like to encourage our citizens and our council to get involved with the organization to determine how we could actually best celebrate that year next year. Having said that, it moves me on to the seventh most beautiful city that the Upshur County Development Authority has been working on. Mm -hmm. We have been elected to that or appointed into that prestigious account. The Development Authority threw out an email asking that everybody that was involved come up with a plan that would help facilitate the 2016 um, celebration and this seventh fest, whatever, it's some sort of a contest. I would propose that the city support the art project as being that type of a project that we would go with on that. Which brings us to the seventh most beautiful city in one other way. Uh, I bet you guys were introduced in the articles to a certain recreation complex. The city of Buchanan has uh, taken upon itself to <coughs> Um, a design. It's a dream. It's a, it's a field of dreams, but it's a dream that's been worked on in this county and this community for quite a few years. It is a much needed project. Um, can we afford it? Mm. Can the whole community afford it? Mm. Depends on how much you want to pay for it or how much you want to help uh, contribute to that goal. Uh, please stand. Um, be aware of that. Um, there will be more to come on that as we move to the next issue that I want to talk to you about. We will be heading <coughs> down to see our legislators in three weeks, two or three weeks, however well, many weeks it is. I would encourage that each of you take the opportunity to talk to your delegates about each one of these projects and from within your boards. Each one of you that sit on a board have probably got some issues that you would want to talk with your delegates about. Michael Dawson and I will be taking the opportunity to do that as well. 
But on top of that, in March, we will be going to the National League of Cities Conference in Washington, D.C. We will take, be taking a few of the problems that we have or issues from our city um, and a couple of the departments. Um, and we will bring in forward the Recreation Complex and Art Program as well and soliciting their uh, participation in our 2016 program. If we can get it out there early enough, it's in their minds, they may remember it, they may come down and celebrate with us. Last but not least, our town hall. Um, I would ask that the council come up with a date by our meeting on the 26th to have a town hall meeting in February. Um, I will leave it up to you to determine if you want to have it in between councils. Um, I would not suggest making it a council meeting because we already have enough business to do. This would be a special meeting, town hall meeting. Um, there would be no decisions made, but it would give the opportunity for the citizens of Buchanan or the surrounding community to address some issues like the fire fee, the B&O tax, the art project, rent complex, anything else that they would like to bring up. Um, so that's what I have. I appreciate everyone being here tonight. I appreciate uh, the work of this council and of our city employees. Is there any other questions or comments from this council before I adjourn? Well, uh, yeah, I guess I do have a comment. All right, Mr. Thomas. Okay. Um, it, you know, it, it, when you mentioned the recreational uh, complex, there, there's a couple things that come to my mind very quickly. And, and uh, Mr. McCauley will remember this also, is that when we developed the stock use center from the county commission right we at one time talked about a capital campaign and um, i still think that is a long-term goal for us so you put it in the field of dreams to have a capital campaign for stocker i think that's a uh, something that we'll look at and uh, when we talk about the downtown i think we ought to have a plan to do something with the uh, the, the spring street property there that we acquired and uh, you know maybe we need to have a little park there. Uh, you talk about Mrs. Strickland wanting to talk to people and have lunch somewhere, so whatever. Not only Joel Bone, but maybe something right in the center of town. Gotcha. Um, that has been discussed before, yeah, quite a bit. And I'm, so I've been asked to think about re uh, reengaging the park committee we had. Um, I would actually suggest that if we're going to proceed further and want to do some of the suggestions you're doing, we actually have a park board that actually has some authority or some influence on perhaps in order to design for parks. Uh, that's something to think about down the road. Um, thank you for that. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, same sign. We are adjourned, folks. Thank you very much.